Well, so communications law for me is really about the nexus between technology and policy. And that's something that's really exciting to me and always has been. So I was very fortunate when I chose to be a lawyer and went to law school that I sort of knew from the start that's the practice I wanted to get into. Um, it doesn't always work out that way for people. Satellites in particular were really because of the people. Uh, Wiley Ryan, the law firm that I work at, is full of really talented, terrific people, probably the best communications law group in the country. One of those people is the chair of the satellite practice, Jennifer Hinden, who is a a good mentor and good friend of mine now. And so I wanted to work with her, got to start working with her, and she really gave me some opportunities early on that challenged me, allowed me to take a prominent role with some major clients. And that's the sort of thing that you respond to, I think. So after that, I just really got into the technology, started to geek out on it, and you know, now uh, that's, that's sort of what I like to do. This couldn't happen because I was one of the few people at the firm who was very familiar with the client's issues, had been working closely with the client for a number of years, and so it was natural for me to be someone to help them out during that period. I've found that to be effective on a client team, I think there's two main sort of principles or goals that I keep in mind. One of them is trying to keep in mind the client, and this could be internal clients or external clients. So if you're at a law firm, this could be your, or any company, your superior within that company or your customer outside of the company. Keep in mind their business goals, their needs. This is sort of the, what I call the why should I care question. And if you can't articulate why someone should care about something, then perhaps they probably shouldn't, and that might not be something you want to waste their time with. The, the second thing I think that's important is to think about how you can be useful for someone, and that's in a number of ways. I think some of the most useful or distinguishing things that I will do for clients may not be what you think of as a traditional lawyer type assignment. It's the sort of thing of making sure that when I send an email to them, it is in a format that they can easily read, get the information from, and if necessary, forward it on within their organization. You know, you think about how you can make someone's job easier, and that's the sort of thing that's going to make you stand out and really make you a valued part of a team. I've been very fortunate to be working at Wiley Rhine, which is a law firm where they really do give associates as much responsibility as they can handle. So for me, it was about trying to demonstrate my knowledge, trying to become knowledgeable, become an expert as quickly as I could, and then be my own advocate within the organization to raise my hand, to take on projects. Um, but the law firm that I work at is a place that really is supportive of those things and allows someone to take on as much as they can handle. So it's been a very good place. It's been a terrific place, especially in the early part of my career. I think my first goal or principle that I would follow would be integrity. I think that especially in a small knit community, a closely knit community like the satellite world or like the communications bar in DC, you're only as good as your word or your reputation. I think the next sort of principle that I follow would be cooperation. I really believe that no one has ever accomplished anything truly significant and good on their own. Everything that's good is really done in a team. I think the third thing would probably be trying to have fun. It's a good way to base your career. Um, and if I could break the rule that all lists should be in three, I'd probably say that the fourth one should be don't be a jerk. For me, getting into the satellite sector or building my entire practice was really about taking opportunities as they came up. If I had started at the firm and said I want to do X percent satellite work, Y percent international, and Z percent wireless, that wouldn't have made much sense and that's not something that you can dictate and make happen from the start. Instead, I think people need to be open to opportunities as they come up and be willing to take those even if they might not seem immediately like the thing that you thought you really wanted to do. Because a lot of times that's when you find out that you really love something that you didn't know about. The other thing I would tell people is that especially when you're starting off as a junior person, you can distinguish yourself by being a fast learner, by trying to pick up technology, pick up business trends, really demonstrate to your superiors that you're digging deep into something. And if you put in that work and speak up and make it known that you're doing that work, 
pretty soon people are going to start giving opportunities your way. I would say honestly that any mentoring I do is 100% selfish. The reason why I enjoy working with law students and with starting off attorneys is because I enjoy those relationships. I have a good time doing that. Also, I would say it's in all of our, within a communications, within the communications bar, with any small community, it's in all of our best interest to have the best and brightest people around us and the best colleagues that we can, even if they're representing a competitor or they're someplace else in the sector. You want to have the best people there because that creates the best environment. So part of being a mentor, part of working with law students is hopefully to try to convince some of those best and brightest people to come join us in the communications bar. And if they end up being GW Law alums, that's even better.